Hey guys, today I'm going over sodium bicarb, okay? Sodium bicarb is a hydrogen ion buffer, all right, or a systemic hydrogen ion buffer, um, also known as an antacid and also known as an alkalizing agent, okay? A lot of you know sodium bicarb when it comes to your H's and T's and giving this medication uh, for hydrogen ions, which is one of your H's. Okay. Now some other indications for this medication, uh, is whenever your patient has acidosis. Okay. So if your patient has a lactic acid buildup due to lack of oxygenation, for example, if, uh, during a crush injury, uh, no oxygen is able to, or blood is able to get to that area, uh, due to the anaerobic metabolism, that area starts to build up lactic acids from all that CO2 buildup in that extremity or wherever that place is on the body that's not getting adequate blood or oxygen. Um, this medication is the drug of choice to reduce that acidosis, all right, or buffer those hydrogen ions. So understand that also this medication can be given during cardiac arrest. Uh, your patient may be acidotic uh, due to lack of oxygen, lack of breathing. Um, now we call this or consider this prolonged downtime. Okay, so you come up on a patient that's uh, someone who's obviously not breathing, pulseless, and we don't know how long they've been down. Or the popular one when you go to the assisted living facility and they say, oh, it just happened uh, two minutes ago. Yeah. Um, we don't know if it's been two minutes. Okay. This is considered prolonged downtime. I don't know how long this patient's been down. So sodium bicarb is a drug of choice that I am going to go for. Okay. Not saying that every single cardiac arrest requires sodium bicarb because if it's a witness arrest and we're bagging the patient and providing good quality chest compressions immediately, um, acidosis typically isn't going to be building up to the point where we're going to need sodium bicarb. A couple other indications for this medication is tricyclic antidepressant overdose um, and hyperkalemia. So the first thing I want you guys to notice with these tricyclic antidepressants are the uh, names here. Notice that they all end in I-N-E. So triptyline and ipramine. Whenever you see a medication that ends in I-N-E and your patient has uh, altered level of consciousness or they're not acting right or they're have possibly a fatal dysrhythmia, um, you always have to keep in mind that there's a, a possible chance that they have a tricyclic antidepressant or TCA overdose. Now, some signs and symptoms, like I said, they're going to uh, vary uh, dramatically depending on the patient. Some will have fatal dysrhythmias and more common signs and symptoms might be altered mental status such as drowsiness, confusion, slurred speech, and those dysrhythmias can possibly lead to sinus tack or even SVT. Uh, the patient will have dry mouth, blurred vision, possibly dilated pupils, uh, urinary retention, constipation, possibly even pulmonary edema. Okay. Uh, also on your EKG, uh, note that there might be potential for VTAC um, and QT prolongation. And don't forget, you're going to be utilizing sodium bicarb if the EKG uh, is, you see those widening QRS complexes greater than uh, 0.12. And with hyperkalemia, we're looking for peak T waves uh, greater than 0.12 seconds on those QRS complexes. And with also with uh, hyperkalemia, we're looking for depressed uh, P waves. Now some contraindications for our sodium bicarb, uh, metabolic alkalosis, um, another contraindication is going to be CHF uh, and hypokalemia. Now, if you're also suspecting a electrolyte imbalance due to vomiting and diarrhea, this medication is contraindicated. Now, the dose of sodium bicarb is one milli equivalent per kilogram, and this right here is the adult box of it is a 8.4% solution, okay? It comes packaged 50 mLs, um, and it makes sure that you see that 8.4% that says that this is basically the adult dose. Now, 
if we can we give this medication again? Yes. Um, typically, when you re-give your sodium bicarb, it's typically after 10 minutes, at least 10 minutes uh, after we've given the first one. And typically, we cut that first dose in half. So if we gave one milli equivalent per kilogram, our second dose is going to be 0.5 milli equivalents per kilogram. Now the pediatric dose is also one milli equivalent per kilogram, but it's not going to be the 8.4%. It's going to be a uh, half that, so 4.2%. Uh, same thing with the second dose. It's going to be again half, so 0.5 milli equivalents per kilogram. One note that I want to uh, share about this medication, if you've ever given the medication or seen it give in the field, uh, most people underdose it by a lot. Um, in this box, we have exactly 50 milli equivalents. So most, most of the times you're gonna see people giving this drug, they give 50 milli equivalents. Now, how much are they supposed to be giving? It depends on the patient's weight. So if the patient weighs 100 kilograms or 220 pounds, how much of this medication am I supposed to give? I'm supposed to give two boxes, all right? And you're not gonna see that very common out in the field. Now the duration of this drug is only about 10 minutes, okay? The peak effect occurs uh, at one to two minutes after administration. Now a quick side note and warning, a lot of the times when you're gonna be giving this medication, sodium bicarb is typically given alongside calcium in a lot of cases. Uh, do not give your sodium bicarb in the same vial uh, or the same push as calcium chloride. All right, these two drugs, when they mix together, you'll get uh, like a calcification and it actually turns into uh, like it crystallizes and you could potentially kill your patient. Okay, so give these drugs separate from each other and make sure you're flushing with uh, normal sailing in between. All right, guys, well, I hope this helped. I plan on making a lot more of these videos on medications, treatments, just different things in EMS. So. If you liked it, please uh, hit like, subscribe. If you want to ask any questions, please feel free to. And I hope to see you all soon.